Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. We've got a juicy director's take just dropped from Aaron Keller, the game director of Overwatch 2. Uh, I've not seen it yet, so we're going to see what he talks about together. He's apparently talking about balance for season 8. Interesting changes maybe. I honestly haven't seen it, so we're going to go for it together. And let's see what Aaron's cooking. So he says, this is one of two remaining director's take blogs for 2023. We'll release another one in two weeks and take the last part of the year off for the holiday season before we pick up back up again in the new year. I'll be writing this one in a sort of turkey-induced fever dream, because <laughs> it's Thanksgiving over there, and the next one just after we launch season 8. This is when we'll release our newest hero, Mauga. Had a chance to play, really good fun. Not sure how good he's going to be, but we'll see. Um, along with quite a few balance changes for the new game, We'll take a look at those changes and touch on a few other topics as well. Okie dokie, let's get straight into it. We're making a general change to the amount of alt charge retained when swapping heroes. Love it. Reducing it from 25 to 15. I probably, I personally would just get rid of it altogether. I don't think it's needed. I think it encourages like counter swapping and things. I don't really enjoy it too much. Um, but at least it's a step in the right direction. Wasn't it like... It was like 30, and then they dropped it 5, and now they dropped another 10. Like, if they keep dropping it down, then just get rid of it, do you know what I mean? We do like that this mechanic removes friction when swapping heroes, and think that it still should, and it still should at 15%. Well, yeah, I suppose, but 15% ult charge isn't that much, like, but just get rid of it. Uh, however, there is the perception that it's almost always an advantage to counter swap upon dying. And we're lowering this value to see if it has an effect on swap rates. I really hope it does. Uh, I think counter swapping is a pain in the bum. However, some people think it's cool. I personally, I think everyone should just pay, play what they want to play. And if you win, great. If you don't, at least you got to play the tank you want, or character we wanted to play. In this, in this case, tanks is normally the 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 biggest swap rate. Let's look at changes coming to some of our heroes for season eight. Yes. Starting with some of the larger changes coming to our tanks. Interesting. We released a reworked Roadhog late in Season 7. Roadhog quickly became one of our top performing tanks with a win rate somewhere around 54%. That might not seem a lot, but if, if you're new to Overwatch or something, but 54% is actually quite big because uh, you're looking at averages, right? So there's probably, you know, there's people who maybe have got like 70% win rate on Roadhog, which is crazy. Okay, carrying on. There's been a lot of feedback around his kit, but we're going to hold off from making any changes at the start of Season 8. They already did make changes, by the way, if you didn't realize. Uh, it was like a sneaky little patch to it. They made it even better. Um, so, yeah, I think Roadhog is actually good. I think they should leave it. However, I have the feeling that Mauga will make Roadhog's life miserable. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. But then I think Mauga will make all tanks' lives miserable because he's just a tank buster by the looks of it. Um, Mauga has a lot of answers to Roadhog. Oh, oh my god, I just, just read it. Should I just read it? <laughs> I just read it. Uh, Mauga has a lot of answers to Roadhog, and we like to see where the meta settles a bit before aiming at the mid season patch for any balance adjustments. Okay, yeah, I, that's fine, I think. But yeah, you're right, Roadhog's gonna pick rate's gonna drop because everyone's just gonna play Mauga. And if anyone plays Roadhog into Mauga, good luck to you. Um, there are times when Doomfist players use his ultimate purely as an escape. Yes, it's a good use of his ultimate. It's a little disappointing to activate Meteor Strike and intentionally land on a health pack rather than enemy players. Correct, that is a bad mechanic, but it is actually a good way to do it. Starting in Season 8, Doomfist will now regenerate 75 health per second while in the air. We're slightly increasing the cost of the ult in order to compensate... So Doomfist will get 75 health per second while he... I'm assuming when he's in his ultimate, not just in the air in general, that would be broken. Yeah, okay, so say this, like Meteor Strike lasts about 3 seconds, so yeah. What's that? 200... Good maths. 225 health, which is about half of Doomfist's health pool. That's a huge buff. And his ult charges quick anyway, so probably that will be a good change for Doomfist. That's pretty good. I like that. Yes, I would, because I'm, I played Doomfist a lot. <laughs> so I would like that. Okay, anyway, moving on, moving on. Tanks are supposed to take and create space. And when Ramatra is in his base form, he can be a little too easy to ignore. 
So we're going to shift 100 of his health to armor, as well as slightly increase the size and damage of his protect projectiles to see if that help. What? 100 armor health. But when he goes to Nemesis form, he's going to have extra armor. I wonder if they, they'll compensate. They must compensate Nemesis form, because if you've got 100 armor plus then all the extra armor that you get in Nemesis form, that's going to be busted. <laughs> but the projectile change I quite like, because Ramatra is really fun to play. But it sucks when you're not in ne Nemesis form. So if they can make that better, um, that would be great. Winston, okay, here we go. Here we go. Come on, I believe. Winston's coming back. He's good anyway. He's always good, but Winston's coming back. Winston isn't the best matchup for other tanks. This is true. You should not focus tanks as Winston. This is part of his kit. But the disadvantage feels too extreme. We'd like to alleviate that a bit. In Season 8, Winston's Tesla Cannon will now ignore armor damage reduction. What? You might have a chance against Bastion. No, you definitely won't have a chance against Bastion. But that's that's good. I mean, it still doesn't matter. Like, tanks that have low health don't have armor. And tanks that have so much health that Winston can't deal with them have armor. It's like, it, that, that won't make any difference. Uh, the only thing that might help against is poking diva at range <laughs> that's the only thing that might if it accounts on his uh, secondary fire they didn't specify but yeah i was uh i saw winston and i got really excited that they i don't know buff his barrier down one second or something give him i don't know but anyway we were praying and now we're it's not gonna matter the only thing is you're gonna take on things like brig a little bit easier great Okay, moving on, a few changes to the DBS heroes. We'll start with Sombra. Okay, she's had a lot of moving parts recently, and we feel she's in a much better spot. I absolutely agree. I thought the Sombra rework was brilliant. Uh, I never played Sombra, and I thought it was a stupid character and a stupid mechanic that she just, boop, disappears, uh, and you know she's coming back in a bit with full health. Uh, I thought that was stupid. Now you can kind of catch her even though she translocates but she's also more lethal kind of thing i, I think it's a really good change so they did a really good job there um oh cool yes so her win rate hovers between 45 and 48 percent depending on the rank i would think that the 45 is higher ranks and 48 is lower ranks uh however her ultimate still isn't as satisfying as it could be so we're going to raise the ability lockout time for emp from 1.5 to 3 seconds and reduce the amount of damage it does from 30 to 25 percent i'm not sure brings her ultimate more in line with hero fantasy and is much sharper in its effect three seconds so old hack used to be like five which was ridiculous it felt horrible to play against really like really old hack overwatch one Three seconds is kind of in the middle. Okay. We'll have to see about that one. I think that's a good change for Sombra and it will suck for everyone else. Because if you say do... I mean, you're basically... You're hacking people as well, right? So your virus does better damage. So you still... What you use, basically you use EMP now. It's just to eliminate one person. That's that's what you use EMP. Or you cancel a big ultimate of the enemy. Um, so it's still going to do that. But it's also going to ruin in everybody else by EMPing them for double the amount of time. Okay, well, hey. <laughs> Go for it. But if they're going just on win rate numbers, though, that's probably not the best idea. Um, just to say, like, let's make her win 50% of the time. No, you shouldn't really do that. Because I think if you give somebody something like this that's, like, really oppressive just to make them have a good win rate you bring back the same problems of old Sombra, which is she wasn't fun to play against. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. It still does actually take quite a while to charge EMP, so it's maybe not too bad. Soldier76 has enjoyed a lot of success in Season 7. He's a really well-rounded DPS. This is actually true. Soldier's actually pretty good. And the self-sustain from his heal can make him really difficult to deal with while he's in its radius. Rather than reducing the effectiveness of the heal, we'd rather open up larger winners opportunity by increasing the cooldown from 15 to 18 seconds. Okay. I don't think that's going to really matter too much. He only really uses heal station once per fight anyway. So it's not going to 
like actually cause a big change it's like the bat but like lamp change it's like two seconds uh longer to wait for lamp it's like yeah you use it once a fight and it wins the fight <laughs> it doesn't matter this there doesn't really do anything um but let's carry on anyway does anybody remember how much damage tracer's pulse pistols do i think it's like super like 3.25 or something it's like a, a really random number like how can you even calculate i wouldn't blame you if you don't we've changed them a lot <laughs> okay if you guess 5.5 damage per shot, you'd be right. Okay, 5.5 damage. So that's 40 shots. What's that? Like 200 and something damage. Um, okay, but not for long because we change the change, change them back to six. Good. Please do because Doomfist buff, Tracer buff. I'm just saying season eight is looking good for me. Uh, <laughs> not biased. Uh, the previous change was 5.5. was made to offset a bug with the fall off and spread. Now those bugs are fixed. Moving them back. To good. Okay. But why did that take so long? We surely when they fix the bug, they're like, ah, cool, we fixed the bug, let's put it back. It didn't, wasn't that like two seasons ago? <laughs> this is so weird. Uh, anyway, good for you, Blizzard, for buffing Tracer. Anyway, let's look at some of our support changes. Brigitte was the best performing support hero since the last patch. Okay. That's strange. I don't think many people know even know how to play Brig properly. Uh, but anyway. And we're seeing your feedback that she's becoming a must pick. We're going to revert the damage on whip shot. Oh, they buffed the whip shot. I didn't even realize. Okay, to try and bring her back in line. We're also looking at the damage potential of Baptiste. And we'll be lowering his primary fire ammo from 45 to 36. Okay. So, before you used to do two bursts of damage and one of heal. You got 10 heals. That would be... How does that work? So, yeah. This is how many... You could do 36 to 12, right? So that's 12. That, that works out perfectly, doesn't it? So if you do damage, damage, heal, damage, damage, heal, damage, damage, heal. Yeah. And you go like that. You're going to do 12. Oh, no, because you're going to do it 12 times. Yeah, you still have a few heals left in the left in the tank. Oh, surely it was better than before then. But I guess they're re reducing his damage, like, over time, but not like, the damage numbers, I suppose. Meh, I like it. Bap's, uh, Bap's pretty good, man. He's like Soldier 76 and he can't die. Uh, anyway, I'd like to touch on one of the items mentioned in the director's last director's take. Specifically, the leave rate in quick play matches. Based on a recently implemented set of penalties for leaving too many matches, that rate has gone down considerably. Good. There's been a bit of talk around that. Specifically that some people view that mode as something that they would like the freedom to leave without worrying about those penalties. Yeah, but the game's like not even 10 minutes. Like, just finish the game and move on. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I don't think I've ever left the game unless it was to group up with friends. Like, that's the only time I've ever left the game. Um, different people play quick play for different reasons. Some people see it as their try-hard version of the game, which you shouldn't. It's quick play. Uh, some view it as a way to experiment with heroes, which you should, but it does affect your MMR, I believe, so... That's something that maybe needs to be looked at. If it doesn't, I do apologize for getting it wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's why you have to play 50 games before you can play comp, right? So it can kind of align you where you're supposed to be. Um, cool. Uh, and others use it as their casual, just for fun version of the game. Correct. Those people are the correct people. It's really difficult to have this part of the game be all those things for all people. Yeah, exactly. In the past, we've talked internally about whether we need a third main queue in the game. What do they mean a third main queue in the game? In order to have different areas to serve people as different levels of seriousness. But don't think that players would voluntarily move into the appropriate queue for their particular playstyle. Huh? Hang on, let me read that again. I don't know what that's saying. In the past, we've talked ah, uh, we've talked internally about we need a third main queue in the game in order to have different areas to serve people with different levels of seriousness. Okay, but we don't think the players will voluntarily move into the appropriate... Okay, cool. So what they're saying is they were thinking to create a third kind of, not game mode, but, you know, like third queue. So comp, quick play, and then mess about, right? Or maybe competitive team fights, and then quick play is just no rules or whatever. I don't know. In regard to penalties for leaving quick play matches, the reasoning behind this is that frequent leavers do have an effect on other people in the match. Yes, they do. The grading is quality. Correct. And some for some reason, when people leave, 
the people that come into the quick pain match next, I swear they give them higher MMR. They're like, because normally what happens is they come in to try and swing the match balance back, right? I'm just, I swear they do that, but if maybe they don't. There are some players that literally leave over 90% of their match. 90%! And we could no longer stick to a black and white policy because of this. The policy is still very lenient, probably too lenient. Okay, where players need to leave almost a quarter of their most recent matches to trigger a light penalty. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, it's five every 20 or something, isn't it? Do you think that like five every 20? Yeah, but that could be like every other game for hours. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Anyway, we'll continue to look at this and tweak these policies in an attempt to promote better match quality, but without the harsher restrictions of ranked play. That's it for this week. Thanks for reading and we'll see you in game. See you there, Aaron. Um, I think all in all pretty good. The soldier change, I have no idea. Uh, I'm a little worried about the sombra change. I think that that's going to upset a lot of people on the enemy team. Which is what they were trying not to do. Winston change is like, thanks, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but it's it's just not going to do anything. Uh, Roadhog leaving his ears. Doomfist change is legit. However, sometimes popping your meteor strike really quick is really good. Um... In which case you won't get any health. But in that situation, you're probably not low health for it. I like the Doomfist change. I can't wait to try that. But we're also going to have loads of Malga. Which is going to be really tricky for Doomfist. Because once you do power block, like, what do you do against all of that damage? Like, there's not a lot you can do. You can only just, like, <laughs> do nothing to him. <laughs> it's not going to do anything. You have to take out his team. But then Doomfist can't do that anymore because he's tanked Doomfist. Anyway. Play Doomfist when Mao is not in the game. Um, but yeah. Okay, cool. I like it. Uh, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I didn't realize Roadhog's win rate was going to be that high. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, Hog is pretty good. I got a feeling that the change that they made was good, but a little too drastic. This change of the ultimate charge retention, they just need to get rid of it at this point. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't change the outcome of the game at 15%. Like... Even 25%, I guess, it does start changing the outcome of the game. But counter swapping is poo. Nobody likes it. Well, nobody that I know likes it. But hey. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, that was pretty cool to go through that. Uh, I do enjoy reading these. I think it's nice to get like an insight into the devs' brains a little bit. But um, they uh, they seem to be doing pretty good recently, I think. the The reworks have been good. Some of the hero changes have been good. Some of them have been a bit like, oh, I don't understand what you're doing, or like, why? It doesn't change the game at all. Um, but some of them have been pretty good. This Romatra change actually scares me quite a lot. <laughs> 100 armor is huge. If you don't realize how armor works, it's like a 30% damage reduction. So that's effectively what, like 140 health um, instead of 100 is how it kind of works, or something like that. My maths is rusty. <laughs> But yeah, Ramatra is going to be pretty good. He can even poke more effectively because of his armor health. I think Ramatra is going to be pretty good. But he also did need a little bit of help because he was in a bit of a bad way. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm going to call the video there. Uh, call it day. Um, and we'll see you in game, like Aaron said. Peace out.